Ricky, this is really weird, Ricky. I have uh, just going through our inventory and I noticed that we've been restocked on Pitiful Human Lizard issues 1 and 2. And I wasn't aware of us ordering m more of this. I know I wanted more of them and it's great to see them here, but... Didn't you know, Jason Lou never left the store. He's, really? He's been here ever since. Ever since the last time he was on yeah. the show? Yeah. He's he just kind of been hanging out? Yeah, I heard noises in the back room. Guys, when are you guys gonna like give me a ride back to Toronto? Have have you have you even had anything to eat? No, just just books. I I I. I... Hey everybody and welcome to episode 210 of Unboxing Wednesdays for comics arriving in stores on Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. Kevin, where's your mustache? Uh, it's right here, Ricky. Wow. It's right here. Okay. Oh, we you know, can grow one. <laughs> you know, Ricky uh, has a full mustache. He shaved uh, on <laughs> November 1st <laughs> and after four days he basically has a mustache that most men would dream of. He is a Portuguese hair growing machine. We got a lot to show you today. Jason's here again to give us a hand. Thank you, Jason. So without further ado, Ricky, can you go ahead and with Jason's help, open up some boxes. Just want to get a quick plug in for our uh, online web store. It's store.stadiumcomics.com. We've got a couple of really cool uh, pre-order packs up online right now. Um, first is the Star Wars number one collector's pack, which will be coming out in January 2015. A bunch of different options uh, for that collector's pack, all the way up to getting all of the variants uh, at, um, at a really cool price. So check that out. Uh, then we also have the uh, Darwin Cook DC covers variants. For the month of December, they're doing the Darwin Cook themed variants. Uh, Darwin Cook is an amazing artist. Uh, all of the covers that month will be wrap covers, which is great and really suits his art style. Uh, so check those out on our site as well. Also, ComicBoxer.com, thank you to everybody who participated in October's Mystery Box. Uh, we'll be posting up the information on uh, what was included in that box probably sometime early next week. The boxes are being shipped out this week to all the lucky people who participated. And uh, those of you who will uh, be receiving October's box will be pretty happy, I think, with the contents of uh, those boxes. Sign up now for November. Uh, you do have, uh, we do have some spots left for the November mystery box. Uh, so get in your uh, subscriptions to that now. All right, we got a ton of chess pieces in today from Marvel. We have Hawkeye and Taskmaster. Constantine, Superwoman, and Black Adam. All right, new Funko Game of Thrones action figures, Daenerys Targaryen, Arya Stark, and Brienne of Tarth. Check out these new action figures, the Pulp Fiction action figures of Jules Winfield and Vincent Vega. We have an Orion action figure from uh, DC Collectibles New Gods line. This awesome San Diego uh, Comic-Con Funko exclusive Dr. Peter Venkman and Slimer. Frozen uh, pop figures of Anna and Elsa, right? Yeah. Sh sh should I let these uh, go, Kevin? From Kill Bill, we have Gogo Yubari, a crazy 88 fighter. And Oren Ishii. Bow, bow, bow. Next up on The Walking Dead, Herschel, Prison Glenn, and Well Walker. The Well Walker? Oh, I remember that guy. Then we have Carol, uh, Teddy Bear Girl, and Tyrese. All right, moving on to the collected editions, we've got Deadpool Classics, volume number 10. We've got in hardcover, Sean Murphy and Scott Snyder's The Wake. We've got a 25th anniversary edition of Grant Morrison's Arkham Asylum book. Uh, and this is in hardcover. If you don't want the hardcover, they've also got a softcover version out today. Volume 1 of Elektra, Bloodlines, Batman Beyond 2.0, Deadpool vs. X-Force. And Miles Morales, The Ultimate Spider-Man, Volume 1. Thor, God of Thunder, Volume 1 in hardcover. Also new in hardcover today is Serenity, Leaves on the Wind, Volume 4. And finally from the collected editions today, it's Walking Dead, Volume number 22. Always exciting when a new volume of Walking Dead comes out. 
uh, and this is a new beginning. This is where it starts off again uh, brand new. There's a time jump. Uh, our characters age a few years after the uh, battle with Negan and his forces. Um, so lots of interesting stuff in this book and I know a lot of people have been dying to pick it up. Alright, moving on to the uh, smaller press books. We've got Men of Wrath, issue number one. This is a second printing of uh, Jason Aaron and Ron Garney's new book. And then we have issue number two of the same book. Oddly Normal, issue number two. Punks, issue number two. The Names, issue three of nine. Then we got Boom Studios, Fairy Quest. Issue number one of two, The Ghost Fleet from Dark Horse Comics. Issue number one. And here is American Legends, number one. It's a play off of Kid Rock. American <laughs> Badass, no. Valiant Eternal Warrior, issue number one, Days of Steel. And from Image Comics, we got Penny Dora and the Wishing Box, issue number one. Angel and Faith, issue number eight. Copperhead number two, second printing. Velvet, issue number eight. Robocop, issue number five. And Doctor Who, the Tenth Doctor, number four. The Zoo Hunters, issue number one. Ghost, issue number nine. Skyman, the one shot from Dark Horse Comics. AVP, Alien vs. Predator, uh, issue Two of four. And then, oh, look at this uh, scandalous cover of uh, John Carter, w Warlord of Mars, issue number one. All right, we've got a second printing of the very popular Birthright, issue number one. Really great read. Uh, I would suggest picking this up if you didn't get a chance uh, the first time around. And issue two is out today as well. Uh, so pick that up while you're at it. Then we've got The Fade Out, issue number two. This is a second printing of that book. God Hates Astronauts, issue number three. Spawn, 248. Spread, issue number four. And then Boom Studios, The Woods, number seven. Okay, we've got, oh, what's this? Terrible Lizard, issue number one. Jason, wait, what's going wait, on wait here? Wait a minute, what? what? There's a li another lizard book out this week. Okay, well, it's not I thought pitiful. You, I thought you trademarked the word lizard in comics. I, I thought so, too. What is the difference between a terrible lizard and a pitiful lizard that is also a human? Well, you know what? This one's terrible. Mine's pitiful. I'm just saying that this is terrible because it has terrible on the cover. Are you saying that Colin Bunn, Drew Moss, Ryan Hill, and Crank are terrible people? Uh, no, he's not saying that. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just no. saying it's a terrible lizard. I'm just, I'm just reading the title. Yeah, uh, it looks pretty cool, but uh, you know. I love the art. Uh, another really cool release from Image Comics this week is Tooth and Claw issue number one. It's 48 pages. There's no ads inside. Full of like awesome uh, anthropomorphic uh, animal head people that uh, are part of some awesome civilization. And it looks amazing. The art is great. Can't wait to read it. It's written by Kurt Busiek, so uh, probably a really good story as well. And then we got the humans. Humans for life. Humans till death. Oh, and there's a lot of uh, explicit drawings now, in this one. Now, wait a one. second, uh, Jason. Uh, We've got another book with the name Human in it this week as well. Yeah, but this, your book. Yeah, but but this is this is uh this is humans. So you didn't trademark the human. No, I, I did. Okay. I did not. All right. But man, are there a lot of explicit drawings in here? Uh, check it out if you are the age of eighteen plus. Yes, please, please, <laughs> only eighteen plus. It's an awesome book, though. What would happen if? Um... Oh, the back cover. <laughs> yeah, back cover is pretty bad Boy. too. What would happen if, uh, you know, a Planet of the Apes type planet, uh, you know, with apes instead of humans, but they're called the humans as their bike gang, which is awesome, and it's like set in like a 1970s exploitation type scenario. Um, I think it's going to make for pretty awesome reading. I can't wait to read this book. It kind of has that Robert Crumb look too. Uh, yeah, it does. Okay, moving on to DC Comics. First up, we have a special $1 edition of the first chapter of Batman Year One. Uh, one of my favorite Batman stories. Scooby-Doo team up number seven. This time they're not teaming up with Batman or Robin. They're teaming up with the Flintstones. Those of you who don't know, Flintstones, really classic cartoon from the 60s. Um, 
Fred, Wilma, Barney, Pebbles, Bam Bam, Dino, you know, all that kind of stuff. Tiny Titans return to the treehouse. Issue number six. Teen Titans, issue number one. And The Flash, season zero. Issue number two. Swamp Thing, issue number 36. We've got Green Lantern, issue 36, which is part, uh, act two, part one of Godhead. Very trippy cover. And the Green Lantern Lego variant. Aquaman and the Others, number seven. Injustice, Gods Among Us, year three, issue number three. Lobo, issue number two. Ricky, you're a big Lobo fan. Does new Lobo get a thumbs up or a thumbs down from you? Thumbs down, man. Thumbs down, Ricky says. Don't let that, uh... You know, don't let that harsh judgment affect your enjoyment of Lobo. Ricky uh, is a harsh critic of all things Lobo. Earth 2 World's End, issue number 5. And then we have Earth 2, uh, issue number 28. Ricky, why are you hovering around right. while I show this book? We talked about Lobo and the new okay. Lobo and how uh, poopy he is. Look at this. There's like him at court. It's like some Shakespearean thing and he's like, Oh yes, my love. And he's like doing all this weird stuff. This isn't Lobo, people. What, what, he's not like some Shakespearean man. He is an intergalactic biker. Who is, he's the main man. And he has like variations of the word frag. There you have it, folks. Lobo, in Ricky's mind, no Romeo. That's the headline for tonight. <laughs> Future's End, number 27. Batman Eternal, number 31. Action Comics, number 36. Here's an awesome variant cover of Action Comics. Uh, 36. We've got Grayson, issue number four. Here's another awesome variant cover of Grayson for... Gotham Academy, issue number two. Justice League 3000, issue number 11, or should I say, in Justice League. Green Arrow, number 36. And Detective Comics, issue number 36. We got the Francis Menopal variant cover. And we got the awesome variant cover! The Lego version. And finally today from DC we have Superman Unchained issue number nine, the final issue of this series written by Scott Snyder and Jim Lee. Uh, not being cancelled due to lack of sales. It's one of, uh, it's probably our best-selling Superman book when it does come out. But more being uh, pushed aside because Jim Lee and Scott Snyder I think are very busy men. And uh, this is an awesome wrap cover for this book. Um, this is the regular cover. Then we got the Brian Hitch variant cover of uh, Superman hitting a monster in the face. The David Finch variant cover of Superman lifting a rock. And then we got a very exciting cover. <laughs> a sketch cover of Superman Unchained. All right, on to Marvel. We've got Edge of Spider-Verse number four. This is a second printing. We've also got a second printing of Thor, God of Thunder number 25. It is a God-sized final issue that has gotten a God-sized second printing. I'm not lying, that's what it says there in the corner. And then we have from Stephen King, The Drawing of the Three, issue four of five. The all-new X-Factor, issue number 16. X-Men, issue number 21. Deadpool's Art of War, issue number two. And we got the Hulk, issue number eight, with Red Hulk. And here is a special Rocket and Groot variant to Hulk, issue number eight. Next up, we have uh, Rocket Raccoon, issue number five, with this awesome cover by Scotty Young. Uh, really cool concept to this issue. Ricky uh, let me in on the details. It's basically Groot telling uh, a story around a campfire, uh, as only Groot can, of course. So uh, I'm sure you can picture what that would look like in your mind. And here's a variant cover of Rocket Raccoon issue number five. I should point out that this is part of the Rocket Raccoon and Groot variant covers that are coming out all through the month of November. Uh, it's, a, it's a themed variant month from Marvel. Uh, so you'll see a lot of these. Um, you know, it fits this book being that it's Rocket Raccoon, but you'll see them on all, all types of books this month, so. There you go. Then we have Legendary Star-Lord issue number five. And the variants of Star-Lord, which is a homage to uh, Groot's first appearance in Tales to Astonish, was it? I think yes. so, yeah. Death of Wolverine, Life After Logan, issue number one. Life After Logan, here's the second cover. Death of Wolverine, The Weapon X Program, issue number one. Avengers X-Men Axis, issue number four. And the variant cover featuring Rogue. Spider-Verse Team-Up, issue number one. Here's the regular cover. The variant starring uh, Porky. Spider-Ham. 
Spider Ham, Peter Porker. And then finally today we have Amazing Spider-Man issue number nine, which is part one of the Spider-Verse event. Yes, the edge of Spider-Verse is over. We are now firmly entrenched in the world of the Spider-Verse. Uh, so lots of crazy things gonna happen in this book, I am sure of it. And here's the Scotty Young variant. A masterly painted variant. If you did not get enough uh, Groot and R a Rocket Raccoon this week, here's another Groot and Rocket Raccoon variant. You know, it's the hardest thing of not having a beard. It's all the temperatures you feel. My face has never felt so many temperatures in my life. What's going on here? Anyways, let's move on to some prizes. Uh, last week, we were giving out a copy of the Harley Quinn Annual for your noses so that you may smell it and enjoy it. Toby asked you guys who would play an awesome Harley Quinn, and uh, we got some pretty awesome answers. Uh, Alfie Hagen said Margaret Robbie, but if we wanted someone who could really embody the role, Will Smith the man. So, I guess he's really advocating for Will Smith to be Harley Quinn. For whatever, not even Jada Pinkett Smith, but Will Smith. Maybe we can get Jaden Smith in there. That'd be good. Um, Collector's Edge said, I would love to see Katy Perry as Harley Quinn, in my opinion. I think she has the right spunk, hair, humor, attitude, and body for the role. You know, I kind of agree. I think that Katy Perry is actually, would be a smart choice. I'd watch that. Um, I think she's, you know, spunky enough. Like... Like Mr. Collector's Edge said. And before we get to the winner, we had a question uh, from Fatty B1, Fatty B, right. who asked, "What camera do you guys use?" Well, uh, we use a simple Canon T3i. I got it on sale once online, and we've been using it ever since. It's great stuff. So if you're ever thinking about filming YouTube videos, uh, a sweet digital SLR camera is where you need to go. Especially if you have natural sunlight. If you watch the episodes we film at the Sidekick store, whew, so beautiful. You guys look pretty. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so back to the prizes. The winner goes to the R Danny 1982 who said, My pick for Harley Quinn would be Jane Levy. She came out in the Evil Dead remake as the drug addict. Harley needs to be twisted and darkly funny. So congratulations. Uh, for this Halloween, I showed my girlfriend the Evil Dead. She's not a big fan of horror films, but I was like, <laughs> Evil Dead? How bad can it be? Oh, man, that movie was, like, intense. I'm pretty sure she was under the blankets half the time and uh, screaming the other half of the time. So if you really want to scare the remake of the Evil Dead, terrifying stuff. It's, like, really well done. Now, Jason, I heard you have a question for today's audience. That's right, and it's for this prize here, Amazing Spider-Man Part 1. Yes. Do you want that? Front row? Front row over there, you want one? Yeah? That guy over there wants you, one. You too, you want this one? <laughs> okay, so you got to answer to this question. All right. All right, so Merlin, Morlin, uh, he's been uh, killing off all sorts of Spider-Men mm -hmm. in the Spider-Verse. Now, if he could kill any character uh, in, in any universe, which character would you want Marlin to, to kill? Well, and you guys got to keep in mind, too, that the Spider-Verse is infinite. So even if it's a character you kind of make up, please let us know this character that you make up. I'd personally like to see them kill the slacker Spider-Man. He sits at home all day smoking drugs and playing video games, not doing anything, and his poor single mother... He has to support him the whole time. Morlin, please kill that one. <laughs> what a bum. So, what a bum. So the best answer will win a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number nine, which is Spider-Verse number one. All right, everybody, that is it for this week. Thank you once again for watching. Thank you, Jason, for giving us a hand once again. Uh, we promise that uh, sometime over the next few weeks we'll give you at least some water. Uh, maybe some cat well, food. Uh, cat uh, food's uh, on uh, sale uh, at can, Target. Can you just give me a ride back? Like, uh, that's, no, that's yeah, man. Like, I got, like, just I got uh, a token? 
I got like some old newspapers yeah. and stuff in my back seat, and I don't uh, even drive. Like crumpled up McDonald's bags. There's really no room in there. <laughs> There's right fumes now. coming off these comics. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting pretty high, guys. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, you know, you want to live that comic <laughs> life. That's uh, <laughs> sacrifice you gotta uh -huh. take. Anyways, uh, thank you, Jason. Remember to check out previous reviews. We've got a new episode that Ricky and I have to shoot sometime soon, and a new yeah. episode that has to be uploaded. Once I get Ricky some vital information for that video uh, that he's been waiting for. You can connect with us using any of the websites you see listed on our screen. Make sure you check out our web store, check out Comic Box, or check out the Recap Podcast. Louis just posted a new one this week. Uh, he'll get you all caught up on all the uh, goings-ons in the world of comic book storylines. And check out Jason's Pitiful Human Lizard. Jason, uh, obviously they can get the book at our store, but where can they get it if they don't have a store near them? Yeah, you, you can also pick it up at the, the Store Envy website at uh, pitifulhumanlizard.storeenvy.com. Awesome. All right, so everybody, please check out his book. It is, it is great. Ricky and I do make uh, guest appearances in it. Uh, Ricky has a, a big scene in issue two. Huge. Yeah. Uh, you He's can't miss him. You can't miss him. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you all next time for episode 211. Take care and enjoy your comics this week. Bye!